Okay, uh, this is Changing Times, Changing Worlds brings you Otherworldly, the Wednesday show and for speakers and topics to enlighten and enliven your night and open your eyes to hidden aspects of a reality that many choose to deny. And we hope to entice you to come. Tonight uh, is going to be more like our conference panels than like workshops. Uh, technically, uh, Thor Halverson has agreed to host for me because I am under the weather. I just got my second COVID shot. Woohoo! Uh, and I'm feeling a little COVID brainy. Uh, so I'm not at the top of my game. Um, we're going to be talking about tarot cards. I have pulled out um, a small fraction of mine, which I can share with you. I only pulled out about 15. Uh, uh, but we're going to be talking about how, what our experiences are and how we pick a deck or it picks us, a folklore, uh, and what I'm hoping for is interesting experiences and how we use our decks uh, and uh, how we would choose tarot over Lenormand or any of the oracle decks uh, and how we pick a uh, Tar tarot over other when is tarot better than you know which situations is tarot the best form and which times do we go to something else oh uh, say so that is my introduction how about we go around and and everybody tell what their first deck was and how then and, and maybe then how what their currently most likely to use deck is. And I will start by saying mine I got in the 60s and I don't know where it is anymore. It was called the Thoth deck. It is not the Aleister Crowley Thoth deck. It was an Egyptian design deck in black and white that you were gonna color. And uh, I then because I got a little ways into coloring and then I decided to make my own deck. I then got the Aquarian deck, which well, is this one, which is still my original. Yeah, the one I had. And several of my friends had this when it was, uh, and it, as you can see, it had lovely uh, Peter Max poster type images. But the faces were very pale and scritchy. And the cool thing about that, and this is my cool story, but not the kind of story I would like to hear from others. Three people in my dorm had this deck and we used to get together and read. And one day we pulled our decks out and we noticed, we compared them. It's all the same deck, all printed, right? And the faces had changed. One of the girls had a knight who always came out to being her boyfriend and the face had changed to look more like him. And when you're hmm. looking at three cards that have been printed together and you're looking at them and, and the faces have gotten different, that is a little bit of cool weirdness. Um, and that's, so, and who who wants to go next? Okay, I will. Okay. Um, my, unfortunately, I didn't realize we were going to be playing show and tell with decks, so um, I can just describe my first one was a um, rider weight that was shoved at me by uh, the owner of at what that time was the Warlock Shop. And I was told I had, Herman? yes, I used to work for him. Cool. Back, yeah, well, I back when it was the Warlock shop, I was down in the basement and under the table because, well, I technically wasn't old enough to be even working there part time. Because New York had some very weird laws about people going into occult shops. And I had about four more years before I could do that. But so... I was, um, basically he handed me that and he handed me a copy of Eden Gray's Pictorial Guide to the Tarot. And I, he told me, learn. 
He didn't even charge me for the damn thing, which with Herman is kind of a uh, was kind of a minor miracle. Yeah, but and you know, wh why have a shop if you can give things away? Yeah, and my next one, I didn't buy for another several years. It was the one they printed. It was originally called. It's now called the Tower of the Witches. Back then, it was called the 007 Tarot because it's the one they used in the movie Live and Let Die. You know, with all the, the short, chubby little people. So I have that still somewhere. It's one and of I use that. Moves. Yep, I use that for many years. And then my um, best friend slash sister shoved a copy of... Um, the tarot trilogy at me and at that and i follow the instructions in the back and i'm was sitting in the student union with uh blank three by five cards and colored pencils and colored pens making my own copy of the tarot of the animation from the instructions in the back and i use that for many years it's still somewhere around problem with three by five cards is they tend to wear out very quickly. So I was constantly replacing them. And years later, at Penzik of all places, Kathy found an actual copy of the Tower of the Animation that had been printed um, up in Canada and was being sold by Falcon's Muse, you know, the people who sell all the interesting stuffy um, uh, stuffy um, birds of prey and the hunting bats and the other um, interesting little stuffy animals. And a few years later, I found a second copy. So I have a spare copy sitting at home, sitting in the on the coffee table, ready to be used when the, my original copy finally wears out. And finally. Kathy and I have purchased one for each of us, a copy of the Alleyman's Tarot, which is kind of a found object tarot deck. So it'll be interesting to see how those work. Among other things, it's got way more than the standard. If we use every card that we bought, including the booster packs, um, somewhere around 150 to 200 cards, many of which are duplicates. So it, could theoretically be possible to have not one, but two lightning struck towers in your reading, which could really be interesting. I will note it's or, actually over 212 cards. Yeah, I yeah we've got, yeah, we, we just finished ordering the last bits a couple of days ago. So we have basically a copy for each of us, the book and all the booster packs. Cool. Plus an extra coin for her, Kathy, and an extra poker chip. Mm -hmm. We haven't gotten the we haven't gotten the box or the um, cloth because really don't need it. Mm. So this should prove interesting. I've always been face it. I am something of a, of a street magician, street shaman. So playing with that should prove interesting. So that was my yeah. You know, that was our big metaphysical purchase for the moment. Have you been checking out the Facebook group on it? Oh, it's fun. Uh, I mean, there are a, lot I really of, a lot of people swapping cards around, so I think a lot of the decks, and when people start using them, are going to have extra stuff that didn't come with them. What, and people, what are writing, people are writing stories. And... What yeah, I know I made... Was... It's called The Alley. Okay. Where people who, per, who have bought into this car, this deck are gathering, and they're forming regional groups now. There's now a New England. I, I have to remember to join that. Cool. I posted an invitation to this Zoom meeting tonight in there. Thank you. And it is dreadfully a dreadful source of temptation because everyone is mentioning all these decks I've never heard of that they, oh, they God, are willing yes. to swap cards oh. from. And by the way, Chippecon, I am familiar with that boss deck you have or had. I believe it was produced by Builders of the Aditum. Back in, <laughs> because I think my sister has a copy of that, and she actually colored everything in. Good for her. 
Well, that's Johanna. She can be very, very um, persistent. These are the cards I've gotten in trade so far. <laughs> It takes so ours has to make a deck. Oh, what I was also about to say is I actually made some extra cards for my copy of the, the homemade copy of the Tower of the Animation. Nice. I added, I added two. I added the Phoenix, which is Rebirth, and the Fire Dragon, which is Annihilation. <laughs> eh? So... Yeah, if that one turns up in your reading, um, don't bother picking your next incarnation. You're not having one. Yeah. The universe has decided when you finally leave, Kachunk. Hence, I only use that deck for very special people who can handle the concept of um, you might not want to make any future plans. <laughs> I laugh, but I, so, yeah. Okay. Well, for, for me, uh, this is uh, Thor, or Taliesin, or whichever name you might know me by. Um, my first deck, 20 some odd years ago, was DJ Conway's Shapeshifter deck. Which, Not a bad one. Surprise, no, it's a good one. One of my favorites. Yeah. Still is one of my top go to. And, um, I like that one because I've always felt that we're, tan we're, we're tangible until we're not. And that my grandmother always said, we should never see ourselves so rigid that we don't see the avenue for change. So the idea of the shapeshifter kind of appealed to me because mm -hmm. It was my connection with wanting to understand nature, but also the spiritual world. And well, I've always had a connection with nature. Uh, my dad would tell the story about when I was a kid, I would go outside and there would be butterflies all over me. Or the one time he walked outside and I was petting what he thought were stray cats and found out that they were baby, um, they were baby skunks. And I managed to not get sprayed. Mm -hmm. So, so, um, and so that deck always holds the fun spot with me. Another one that I like a lot is the Robin Wood Tarot, mm -hmm. which is a good go-to for me. I also like Robin Wood's book, uh, What, Where, Then, If, I think I'm, if I'm saying the name correctly, the title correctly, that is always uh mix up the words a little bit but i think it's if then what if or something like that it's a really good book by robin wood it's about ethics so that that was one of the things i really liked from her and all right the is holding up the cards. i was gifted the, these are robin oh, okay. woods um Oh, what okay. I liked about oh, her, her book was she explained why she chose the colors and symbols when she did it. Yeah. Which, um, which helps, I think. The, right. There was a... Uh, Hello? Front to it. I don't have it in front of me, obviously. Oh, yeah, that one. You got it. I like that deck a lot. The room um, not only the plants that they use in that, but they also explain the meaning behind the animals and everything. I mean, they just go into depth about why they chose what they did for each card, and I really like that. And it gets you more familiar with herbs. And We're losing you a bit, I think. I want to have one that packs a little bit of a punch, kind of a little uh, outside of things a little, but the steampunk tarot. Uh, that one kind of, uh, I found that I could actually get pretty accurate readings with it. So I, I rather like that one. Um, I've got. Of course, there. Huh? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Can come um, later. So, 
Oh, okay. So I those are those are just a few of the decks that I really like personally. Okay, who who hasn't gone? Jenny, did you? Well, I do have a history of deck, all of which I still own. Um, my first deck actually came from my father back in nineteen seventy one or seventy two. And he had picked it up at a yard sale for me. And I think it was a basic Rider, Rider, Rider weight. Um, it may also have been an Italian fortune telling deck of some kind that I, because I had both of those very early. I was 12 years old. And never really learned how to read with either of them. Rider weight is not the most intuitive deck for me, the intuitive mm -hmm. style. Um, the next deck I bought myself was actually, I, I had visited, I was visiting some friends up at the Sterling Renaissance Festival, not the one down in New York, New York City, but the one up near, um, Oneida, uh, 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 oh, up near, uh, Oneida area. And, uh, somebody had the Norse deck, the Norse tarot. And I was looking at the cards and just fell in love with them. My mother's side of the family is all Swedish. So the artwork just really attracted my attention. The backs are gorgeous. Nice. Jenny, uh, there are a couple of, is that, is that this one? Yes, it is. Yes. That, that's clam, one of the ones that you have the most box. often. Came in a big clamshell box, yeah. I don't have the book for it anymore. A number of things have gotten lost in moves. Um, this was one of the first ones I bought myself. Other things are getting mixed in here. And I started doing readings with it about, mm, about 1980 or so. And the one time, the first time I read with it, I went to a birthday party and was doing car reading cards there. And apparently actually frightened some people with how well I did. Yeah, don't you love that? <laughs> yeah. Spook me. Sigh. But uh, yeah, I had some amazingly pinpoint specific things I came up with. And then I, uh, I went to try and find, I, I wanted to find another deck. And I can't actually remember if this one was before the Norse deck or not. I went looking at our local bookstore with all the, you know, Seven Rays Bookstore, well known in Syracuse. Um, no longer here, it's a shame. Uh, I found the Sacred Rose Tarot. If I have this deck, it is still packed from our last move. Um, I loved the artwork initially, but once I got the deck and opened it and tried to read with it, it really didn't work for me well. So as we move forward with the Alleyman, that's probably one, if I find it, I'm going to be trading cards from. Um, since then, I got the writer, I got the uh, Morgan Greer deck. Mm -hmm. yep. Because a Me friend of mine in Syracuse used it and it looked really nice. I like the almost stained glass bright colors mm. and then i think after i'd seen chippecon using the aquarian deck i got that so i have my own copy of that deck i remember we, one should, the, compare, uh, we should compare decks sometime see if the okay. faces are the same <laughs> well i remember you commented about how the faces came up differently for you at times and that was one of the reasons why I went ahead and got it. Um, I haven't had that phenomenon, but I don't get many occasions to read tarot yet. And I'm uh, 60 years old now, so I need to make up for lost time. Well, I finally had my first um, outside, you know, reading gig in a year and change. So, you know, yeah. give it time. It'll happen. 
Oh yeah. Well, I've been, I've only had tarot decks since I was 12 years old. I'm 60 years old now. And I very seldom had done readings. Um, I'm 63 and got my first one when I think I was 14 or 15. Uh-huh. Okay. Fair enough then. So. so then I got a friend of mine locally was making a tarot deck with a partner of hers. And I got the Broke B Tarot, which I think oh, I you, have, you have a copy of now. We have a show. We did a show on that. So anybody who's yes. listening to this on YouTube, you can flip through and find that show. Yep. What she did was do very kind of contemporary illustrations even. And she put the meanings right on the card. She didn't stick to the necessary, necessarily uh, original styles of the images from Rider Waite. There's the five. Nothing wrong with that. Exactly, exactly. She showed me some images before, the, before her Kickstarter was done with, she showed me some images and I said, and I was actually able to read them well, even without the messages on the cards. But she's got the upright meaning and she's got the reverse meaning. And she considers it a learning deck. It's a smaller size deck. And she actually calls it a tarot training deck. And I found I could do intuitive readings very quickly. So then I saw the Alan Tarot and I went nuts. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting the full setup. I've been trading cards and trinkets. We're, we're trading charms and trinkets and things as well because some people incorporate those in their readings. I'm, I've been thinking about how to use mine and I've, I've got some ideas. Um, I'll, I'll leave that to my friends who do bone readings and you know. Yeah. I uh, am so looking forward to this deck. I've already gotten some trades in. Um, interestingly, a lot of people are sending pentacles for me. I'm having people mostly draw randomly or choose the ones they think belong to me. So I've got I've got a card from the um, I've got a card from some kind of earth oracle, nature oracle, and cards from a cat deck. I've got one of the Golden Girls cards. Golden Girls? Yeah, Golden Girls. It's a Golden Girls tarot deck. It's under twenty bucks on Amazon. Oh, okay, I got to see that. Yeah. So the Queen of Cups is Rose. Of course. Dorothy is Judgment. <laughs> yeah. I didn't never watch much of it, but yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Or was she Death? I forget now. Maybe she's both. I haven't seen the whole deck, but uh, so that is the next exciting level of tarot I'm looking for. And I'm getting excited about modifying cards now too, because trades. I have uh, 23 cards in trade here. They're eight different sizes. Oops. So if I want to use them in the same deck, there's going to have to be some trimming. Or I might use them in different decks. Who knows? But it, it's gotten me so much more excited about tarot again than I have been for a long time. I'm looking forward to using the new deck from, from Seven. And I'm looking forward to making my own deck and maybe even making my own cards. So that's where I am in tar tarot right now. And I've been sitting here just, I have some tarot bags I knitted that have gotten moth eating, eaten and I'm sitting here doing kind of ragtag repairs on them to fit the alley style. Well, he mentioned the, the site mentions, you know, a cigar box for keeping them in. And I've got a couple of cigar boxes downstairs that would probably do. I yeah. may even have a, an old um, cedar one somewhere. So nice. That I got, well, yeah, my dad was a, a cigar aficionado. So some of them, you know, I have an awful lot of Anthony and Cleopatra boxes mm. simply because he smoked a lot of them. Yeah, my father was, I think, Dutch Masters or something like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't have a store of cigar boxes to draw from, so I'm going ahead and getting theirs. <laughs> yeah. And I'm probably going to add embroidery to the cloth that they send. 
Well, just in lost too. my case, a lot of those cigar boxes are holding the uh, lead soldiers that I cast and still haven't painted yet. <laughs> uh, very cool. Among other things, I need, I well, I need to get another mold that would let me fit as it were, fill out the army. There's places I can buy them. I just haven't gotten around to it. Mm -hmm. Then I've got to locate a source of lead, which is getting mm. harder and harder to find. Or what they use oh. lead now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not uh, sure where you'd get it anymore. I think, that, I think that craft is probably switching over a lot to 3D printing now. Yeah, well, I kind of like the melting and the pouring and the trimming right. and the... It's, and the archae and the 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 um, alchemical uh, as well as chemical uses of lead. Oh yeah, and the, you and the very yeah. Some of the trades I've gotten were some uh, old Norse replica coins that somebody had cast themselves. There's a bunch of those in the SCA. Yeah, this was someone in Cal Colorado. I mean, I don't know how many Scadians I've interacted with in the course of this. <laughs> Yeah. Lois, do you, do you want to chip in here? Yeah, I was going to say that, you know, uh, I, I too have thought about trying to make a, a tarot deck at one point. Um, most of the, I think like, when, when I've done weavings and so forth, uh, sometimes I get asked, you know, what made you pick one deck over another? And I usually tell them if they didn't have experience with tarot decks up to now, I said one of the things to do was pick one that's from a mythology that you're familiar with mm -hmm. and start there. And then, you know, get something basic like the right, right, right away to get mm -hmm. the understanding of the structure of tarot and build from there mm -hmm. and then you can go to the more uh abstract uh interpretations and things like that and so for me um uh, i i also look at things like i've had discussions where we've discussed um uh, tarot decks that have multiple uh, cultural symbols and systems on one card, like they would have the, the uh, Jewish Kabbalah symbols, the, the I Ching symbols, runes, um, Ogum, and other things all on one card. Wow. And I don't know, it may, be, it may be just my personal thing, but to me, I don't know. It, I mean, I would ask this actually is, you know, how do all those systems reconcile outside of the cultural lens that they are derived? Um, and I believe the term is chaos magic. <laughs> yeah, that's my problem with decks like that. Um, there was. Uh, another deck that I bought for the artwork that I really, really like, but when it came to the reading, I, I realized they were mixing five or six different cultural um, five or six cultural uh, mythologies and cultures with the deck, and two of them were, uh, well, sorry, one of them was a mono the other were, were polytheism, but then they would not get along with the others. So I'm just like, yeah. how do they reconcile that? Me personally, I can't. Yeah, I, I find that difficult to work with as a concept. It, to me, that's it that's makes it difficult to read. Yeah. But if mixed imagery makes it difficult to read, that sounds like the the Alleyman Tarot is mixed imagery on steroids. <laughs> mm. Yeah. 
Well, but he's actually, I mean, they have actually invented a whole fifth suit, for instance, and there's an extra mar arcana, extra major arcana. And um, what I'm actually looking at from the sample cards, and he's shown, he's shown every single one of them so far, is this is going to be something I have to do intuitively. And a lot of the images I've seen have been more intuitive, and I can't give an example. But I'm seeing it as teaching myself to go to another level with tarot. Mm. Note, the tarot of the animation has a fifth suit as well. Oh, OK. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure it's not a new concept. No. Uh, with, um, with the tarot of the animation, the suit is called Aura. Okay. It deals with the psychic, with the psychic and the spiritual, letting cups deal with feelings and emotions. Okay. It's also the suit. It's also the suit for redheads. <laughs> no, no longer lumping them into wands with the blondes. Okay. And the element is not one of the four classical ones. It's plasma, not the stuff Ooh. in your veins, but um, energy plasma. Right. Interesting. I like yeah. that. Tarot trilogy is out of print, but used bookstores usually have at least one full set. And, yeah. and as the notes for creating the um, deck are in the back of every volume, you don't even need that. OK. So I just, I've, that's the one I've been using for, well, let's see, longer than Kathy and I have been married. So call it about 40 years. Cool. Well, wow. if, you, if, you, if you talk from the first deck that I made through to the bought decks, easily that. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw it, this in here because this is a, what they call an art deck. It's the Giant's Tarot, which was developed uh, by Raven Caldera. And it uses a lot of the Norse uh, things. But Raven contacted many, many artists, including me, and said, do, would you please do this card for me? And I, this is my card, which is the uh, Four of Swords, which was the vulva, which was the story of how Odin pestered some poor dead lady who had been a famous seeress and kept asking her questions. And she kept saying, yeah, and you want any more? And he would say, yes, I do, because he was Odin, of course. That's um, Odin. Yeah, that's and, grandfather. And so I've got the uh, the Four of Swords, but other people had, uh, here's the uh, Himmer and Hrod, were the Five of Swords. And so if you look at the uh, Bergelmir, Six of Swords, and the Seven of Swords is Loki and Thor. And as you okay. can see, okay. each of them is done by a different uh, artist. So while they have the same border on them, which ties it all together, you've got a lot of different styles in there. And, nice. and a lot of people do, this is, this is an interesting uh, one, it's, uh, judgment is mortal. But uh, that is the, the um, giant's tarot. And that is just, uh, they do a lot of tarot that is, it is for art. Uh, yeah. And, and that is like a step toward lots of different styles. Yes. But, but this has been tied together by having one mind picking which one it is. I have bought two or three herbal tarot books and um, not particularly happy with any of the ones I've gotten because I'm an herbalist and what they're definitely their how they line up the meaning of the tarot card with what I understand the meaning of the the utility what what the the personality of the herb it often doesn't match my understanding of what the card means, and so I get busy. <laughs> and, um, because I, I, I would just, say just read it the way you understand it. But uh, 
So I, I, if I made a taro, uh, an herbal taro, it would have a slightly different thing. But I, I really dislike trying to force correspondences. This is a thing that I've got a hair across my nose about. But you can't say that just because there's a sun in astrology and there's a sun in tarot, that just because there are 18 uh, or whatever, 24 runes, and, and then you've got uh, 21 uh, major trump, that you can line them all up and the sun right. in, in the sawilo in the, in the rune is going to be so, the sun in, in tarot. No, because you, you get a dozen that work and then the rest aren't because that wasn't important in their culture and you're forcing it and it, and it doesn't match and I get crossed. Then I would so suggest that, you stay away from Crowley's magic and theory and practice because the, the appendices are just gigantic tables of correspondences. Heck, or I just get about everything. Cunningham. <laughs> well, they're both dead, so it really doesn't matter. Right. Oh, Lois, t talk to us about what you, you, you had first and what you liked. Well, my first deck was, it was a Rider weight, but it had the meanings printed on the bottoms of the cards. Oh, nice. So it was kind of a cheater deck. I bought that and- I know that one. I gave one it to of my niece. One of Eden Gray's books, um, probably Pictorial Key. Um, yeah, that's the yeah. most common. And I, even, I bought them at a place in Greenwich Village, because I'm from New York originally, called Unicorn City. <gasps> and I have been in that store. What was that? I have been there. Yeah, that's, that's a name out of the past. City, about 1979. Yeah, um, I probably got it somewhere around 76, 77, I think. I have never heard of anybody that. else who even heard of that store. Really? Hi. You have? Okay. Yeah. Like I say, I grew up in New York City. I still, I'm still a city girl at heart. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, that was my first deck. And I think my next one was probably Morgan Greer. And I stayed with that for a number of years to the point where I wore the finish off the cards <laughs> of one deck and bought a second one. Yeah. And then I think uh, Hanson Roberts, and that's the one I still use primarily, although I occasionally dabble with um, one called the Witch's Tarot. Uh, Would that have a bunch of little um, chubby people on it? No, no. Okay, it's not the no, one it, I... It, it, I yeah, the, it, no, it's called the, the Witch's Tarot, not Tarot of the Witches. Yeah. Um, but interesting thing about the Morgan Greer, I was, uh, I don't remember if this was the first deck or the second one, might've been the second one. I was sitting at a Renaissance fair doing a reading for someone looking for the significator. So I was, you know, flipping through the cards, and I came across uh, High Priestess and thought about it for, for this particular uh, client. Nah, kept going, came across the High Priestess. <laughs> what? Somehow there were two copies of the High Priestess in that deck. Oh my. So um. when I made a case for the cards, I put a window on the front of the deck and slipped the second high priestess in that as the, the, the cover page, so to speak. Okay. Cool. <laughs> so that's mostly 
Yeah. I have a growing collection of decks, but I don't really use them other than, uh, let's say, Hanson Roberts. That one, that one travels with me, even though I haven't been doing readings. I think the last time I did readings on a regular basis was the last Renaissance Fair I went to in New Jersey, and that was four and a half years ago. I remember that was what, uh, the 35th um, Lakewood? We all got together? Um, no, I th I'm not sure if it was the 35th. It, it might have been. Um, 19, uh, no, um, 20 seven, uh, 2016 it would have been, 2016. Yeah, that's because we went down for that one. Yeah, th that was the, the last one that uh, I did. And I haven't really been doing much with the tarot down here. Um, North Carolina is a totally different environment. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can you say Bible Belt? Uh, yeah. So I did. It's, doing readings in public is not exactly something I've been comfortable doing. I can understand that. And that's that's. Uh, I guess that I'm kind of bland when it comes to uh, my se selection of decks. Mm. Yeah. That, that's not bland, it's what you use. Everybody yeah. has to go for the deck that, that, that works for them. Um, I, I find the, the Norse deck very blunt. It doesn't pull punches the way some of the decks do. And mm -hmm. that's why I like it. It, it, it tells, you know, it'll tell you, you're being a stupid shit. Yeah. <laughs> if that's what you need to hear. And uh, that is, everybody has to, to get to the one that, that speaks to them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, I, I have the same thing. impression of Norse. My Norse deck, same way, Tipicon, blunt. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And it was out of print for a while. I, I couldn't find mine. I looked for another, and it was like 300 bucks. And I was like, what? Yeah. It's in print again now. And then it's in print again now. And I was like, oh, thank goodness. So I found mine. But I was like, no, I, I really want it, but I'm not spending that for it. Right. Uh, but I have, I have a lot of the, one of my current favorites is the Everyday Witch, which okay. was uh, given to me. It has slight twists on some of the images and finding them, I don't, I don't know if these are in order, so I might not be able to find them. But for instance, in the um, Ten of Swords, which you may remember uh, the <laughs> prone, prone figure with 10 swords stuck in them. Mm -hmm. uh, she's the the witch is still reaching for her wand even though she's stuck okay uh, she's she's like nothing is going to keep this bitch down mm -hmm. and and there are little things like that in so many of the images in that that appeal to me a lot mm -hmm. so yeah, i what i'm really I, had another deck that I bought right before I got the Broke Beat Tarot was the Wild Unknown, which I spotted on Amazon. Um, I don't have it at hand here, but the imagery is really striking in that one. They also have a Wild Unknown Animal Oracle, I think. Hmm. You should find it on Amazon easily enough. It's, it's quite a presentation with a box with a magnetic catch and everything. Yeah, 
I've, I've got a little set to keep in my purse and then I've got the big set for you for holding up if I'm doing classes mm -hmm. and I have I have decks I've got the Klimt deck just because it's so freaking oh. gorgeous oh god I would want one of those oh yeah that was a birthday present and let's I got the uh Egyptian uh Temple of Isis. Okay, well, I've had this for a very long time. I don't think I've ever read with it. Mother Peace Round Tarot. Oh, yeah. you might be able to get a decent reading out of it, but not me. I It, I, it, it baffles me, but I, I had to have a copy. I don't know where this came from. Turned up in my house. Artist's vis Inner Vision Tarot. It is probably the ugliest set of tarot cards I have ever seen. Okay. Uh, I will probably donate it to the auction for the event one of these years. Um, I, I got, well, while looking for the Norse tarot, I got the Viking tarot. As you can see, it's still all shiny and red. <laughs> no interest in, in that one. Uh, uh, Gray Malkin tarot. Oh. Uh, Steve uh, actually had a, um, uh, got two by mistake. So I, an awful lot of my decks are because Steve accidentally uh, got, this is the back. And, oh, this is, and oh. it's all cats. Yeah, I've been thinking I need to collect cat tarot decks. When, when I, we, uh, give me two weeks and I shall be capable of I didn't like the Tower of the Cat people, but you can come over and look at mine. And when you can play with them, I think it puts you in a much better position to decide whether you want to lay down the bucks and buy one. Well, it's not going to be easy for me to just drop in and see your deck. So, but, well, why? I thought you were over in Milford. No, I'm in Syracuse. Oh, I, my goodness. No, that's that. That's I have been since 2010. Away. Boy, I'm out of date, aren't I? <laughs> yes. uh, hey. It's only five hours each way. More like six when you have to stop as much as we do, but. Ah, uh, okay, this understood. Is, this is my most expensive deck. Mm -hmm. It's called the Touchstone, Touchstone Tarot. Okay. And it uh, came with little bags, which her, mother, which her mother had sewn and a little Touchstone for you to have in with it. And it's all made of Renaissance portraits, which have Ooh. been photoshopped wow. to turn them into uh, tarot cards. And since I recognize most of them, I had to have them. Um, yeah. And the other cool thing about this particular deck, I spent 75 bucks on it. I have number, I got a card in here, tells me oh, which yeah, number yeah. I got. Okay. But also has is one of the new decks that has the happy squirrel okay yeah. uh since well, look, that is a card that people have been asking for in the alley montero is a happy squirrel and people in um it is it is a new one it was invented by this on the simpsons episode oh okay uh because the uh lisa is an affair she goes to a, a thing and she and and the psychic reader lays down the the death card and she goes oh, just no no that means change it's like and lays down mm -hmm. um the devil and she, oh, she said, don't don't worry about that that means that you've got uh, burdens on you uh, restraints and she lays down the happy squirrel and lisa goes oh, uh, oh and she, the the lady get out of my tent uh, <laughs> <laughs> which but you know the happy squirrel to me is such a great symbol to have in a reading for something that looks cute and sweet and innocent and will screw you up seriously. Well, you know what I immediately think of is the squirrel in the Ice Age movies. <laughs> it's always wreaking terrible disaster with trying to get that one damn nut. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. But, but if you've ever had squirrels come down your chimney they will oh. rip up. They will chew your uh, their your, your places furniture. Where and we had squirrels. In and squirrels. When we lived in Massachusetts, squir squirrels in the uh, storage area. Yeah. Yeah. 
Understood. But, but I think that inside that of the bathroom wall. If I ever made a, a uh, tarot deck that I was doing, I would definitely include the happy squirrel. This is another one that I enjoy, which is I've heard the of that housewife's one, yeah. tarot. And it has not just, it, it comes in what, I don't know if you can see, it. it's like it's recipe Like box. a recipe box. <laughs> and it has, and the, and the, uh, it has layouts in it, like the TV dinner and the martini and, uh, and all of the artwork is based on 50s and 60s um, mm -hmm. advertising. Cool. <laughs> it, but it it still gives a good reading um, mm -hmm. but it is so tongue in cheek and the last one I really insist on showing everybody which is going to make you all you're either going to go ick or you're going to go oh I got to get that okay it's the transparent tarot I've heard of that one and mm -hmm. I haven't yet I have been learning but it is each of them. You, I don't know if you can. I can't see. One. Let's see if I had some piece of white paper behind it or something. White paper behind it. Yeah. Or anything solid color. But you can see there. You can see a little bit. Uh -huh. Yeah. But you can stack them up, <coughs> or more cool than that, you can. They've got hash marks around the edge so that you can make a running thing and they will work together a little it's huh. it's broken the images of the cards down to its most basic hmm. so that you can keep you you can see the images working with each other because you're re reading through it it does indeed come with a white cloth to read on hmm. which is head darn well better and now, how many yeah. cards do you take to make that work as a concept and and, um, and and a book but to me this looks like a powerful readable deck once you've learned how yeah but i haven't put in the hours yet that so, being the operant word learned yeah we really have to work and i need to start doing that more and that's what mm -hmm. i'm working on making a space for my, myself to work on tarot in my room and learn things and, and make things and, and understand the cards more. Now, I well, let's have a question here. Facebook books, yeah? What was your question? What is everyone's go-to layout? I've, come, I've kind of come to doing a three-card layout a lot of the time. Um, modified Celtic cross or a yes-no spread of anywhere between three and nine cards, depending on, okay. you know, how important the question is, how fast I have to do the reading, and how windy it is if I'm outside. <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, for, those for, you who, for those of you who Celtic. haven't seen it, my outside tarot casting cloth um, has pockets in it that Kathy created so they wouldn't blow away. Nice. I, I copied that and I have one and, and stones yeah. in the corner to hold it yeah. down. Yeah. Mine. Mine is actually set up like a shower cap so that it won't blow away. Mm. Oh. I found with the, with the, well, the problem is you have to custom fit it to whatever table you use. Right. No. Just like you have to custom make the pockets to fit the cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I <laughs> promised Kathy I wouldn't ask for another one for a while. <laughs> well, I had one and it, I must have used it for like decade, like two decades, and it finally started to wear out. And then she made me one, and it was a very wet fair. Oh. So we tossed every all the wet cloth into the dryer, and now it is suitable for my teddy bears to do readings on, because oh. it went from this wide to this wide. Oh my! Oh no! Oh, um, something Kathy just handed me, a book. 365 wow. tarot spreads. Nice. I'll have to go look that up. Uh, yesterday was World Tarot Day, which well, I yeah. put, 
put on the thing and, and they had uh, an exercise with, with different questions to ask yourself, which I hadn't gotten to, but I figure it doesn't have to be done on World Tarot Day. Um, I recently joined a Facebook group, Tarot Nerds, which comes up with all sorts of interesting read, reading um, you know, spreads. I haven't used any of them yet, mostly because mm -hmm. my tarot is sitting in my car where my work bag is. <laughs> mm. I really need to have a, an around the house deck. The I think tarot group Facebook joined, groups are good. But it also led me to joining uh, Tarot with Scissors which is about modifying cards and that sort of thing. Modifying cards with scissors? Well, they, they use the title scissors, but it, most people use a, a guillotine type cutter. Mm. Ah. Oh, to get them I all the same it. size? Hmm? To get them all the same size? To get them all the same size, or sometimes they decide that, say a deck with borders, they rather have not the white border part, so they trim it all down to the edge of the decorated border mm. or something like that. There are a lot of reasons why people might cut them or sometimes mm. they, they, they will edge them with color. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll add details into the card. Mm. I, I like the, I like using index cards, but I've gotten one of those Martha Stewart, the uh, uh, scrapbooking things to round the corners. Mm, I've got the is a freaking going to bend anyway. Yeah. The people are commonly using the three different shapes of corner punches to to put their corners on. Yeah. I have a, a another image here. This is a quick sketch of this is what the image on my death card was. Okay. I, I I didn't like the death card image uh in most death was not shown as as wonderful as I see death. So yeah. I, it was a little gray shape underneath the, the dark brown ground. And then this multicolored prismatic form leaping mm. out into the ether, just happy as a clam to be dead because okay. it's, it's changing. It's changing in a positive way. And I did that, I mean, my, my lovers were embracing and they were all, kind of melded into one flesh. I wouldn't do it the same way now. I have, I, mm -hmm. I now see the lover's card as a really, really hard choice between two good things and you can't give one up. Yeah. But at the time I was thinking lovers and I was like, yeah, lovers, ah. oh. mm -hmm. But You're I, I, your do, over the years. Yeah. I recommend to anybody whether they have talent or not to make their own deck. I yeah, find I mean, my- my tarot of the animation that I made, all the major arcana are just Roman numerals with the name and the meanings on it. And the rest of them, well, I can draw circles for coins and you know all the other <laughs> things, but when it came to the court cards, they're all kind of stick figures. <laughs> you know, the, the swords are stick figures wearing crowns and holding what is obviously a sword, you know, a, a five-year-old's drawing of a sword and the wands are easy, everything else, but it's you know, relatively simple because that's the level of my artistic skill, at least in the graphic arts. My, my... Let's see. If you go back to the, the old taro, the, the classic taro. Yes. They, they didn't have, except for the major arcana, they just had mm -hmm. cups well, and yeah. wands. And swords that is, and and yeah. It, let's face it; it's a lot easier when you've got a pretty little image that'll tell exactly. you all about what it's about. Exactly. Um, but um, like I said, my my level of um, skill with paper and pencil is I can do really good drawing hieroglyphics, and you know. Writing, writing out runes and other non-Roman uh, alphabets. But when it comes to, you know, drawing figures, um, no. <laughs> but. I get that. Yeah. 
but has anybody else got any good stories? I, 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 I had a friend once who put her, her purse down. She went in to help somebody carry something out of the car, put her purse down, came out about two minutes later and her deck was on the ground next to her purse with only, she we only knew it was her deck because there were a couple of card corners and the rest was ash with sm smoke still coming up from it. Whoa. Uh, she, she was basically, if somebody had said, I don't like taro and taken a blowtorch to it, there wasn't time to burn it like that. It was clearly spontaneous combustion. Wow. My yeah, deck I, that I, I made was, uh, it, it all washed away and it hadn't, I kept it very carefully away from any water, but one day I, it was all wet. And I was wondering if anybody else had had decks that had spontaneously destroyed themselves. So well, I, I, haven't looked, I haven't looked in the steel can where I keep my um, copy of Crowley's deck as <laughs> well as the mother piece. Well, it and the mother piece tower are locked up in a steel ammo can. I'm out. I figure let them let them chew on each other. <laughs> One of these years I'll they unseal it and find the winner. <laughs> it, well, more importantly, I'll see what they have spawned between them. Because mm -hmm. I'm sure they both they're both bored in there. But you know, I, I find people tend to freak when you try to use the uh, the book of Thoth. Mm -hmm. Must quite honestly uh, not being a follower of Crowley, I don't find the art that inspiring i asked in the alley for people to tell me what their first deck was that really kind of broke through for them and so many people it was the, the two most popular answers were the soft deck and the gilded deck gilded terror well i've still got my my rider white from Gods, I don't want to think 1974. Okay. I still got my Eden Gray. Yeah. Or several. Well, that I know. Yeah, well, I, I've got the one that um, Herman gave to me eventually disintegrated, and I've got one that I got several years later at a library book sale. Mm. So it's, I, it, it went through the um, rebinding process, so it's practically indestructible. Cool. Well, I have a friend who used to work in a book bindery, so you know she would rebind things if you know properly asked. So I have a question I'd like to throw out for people. Okay. Everybody's talked about their favorite decks. Did you ever pick up a deck that you just picked up and looked at it and went? <laughs> I don't, I've I got want them locked up this. in a steel can. <laughs> That's easy. I've got them locked up in a steel can. I I picked up a copy, handled a copy of White Wolf Games did a tarot to go with their mage rules. Uh, and that is the creepiest thing I have ever encountered in my life. I wouldn't even mm -hmm. let it in the front door. Gaming-based tarot, I'm looking for a copy of the Emperor's Tarot from Warhammer 40k. Okay. I don't, a few cards have been produced, but nobody has ever produced a full deck. Mm. And the way the Direction Games Workshop is going, I doubt that will ever be actually produced. It's a lot of work. It's 78 different pieces of artwork. You know, so. Yeah, and you have to put such thought into the meaning and everything and, and what it does. And, and GW has how many artists on staff? Working on the next expansion? <laughs> yeah, probably I'm working on the next. Shall we? Uh, let's rewrite the rules again and have you buy <laughs> all new figures. Mm -hmm. That's why I stopped playing. Well, a cool thing about uh, the anime decks is they're not always the same size and shape. Jane has a technique that she uses in, in her Swedish cards where you lock the cards together like this and then really? you do a big flip and, and you, you've got it sitting on the table and then you just take one finger and flip the whole sucker over to expose the the cards like that 
Okay. And it only works if the cards are longer, significantly longer, and you can lock them together like that. Hmm. And not many of my cards can, but this this yeah. is a very cool deck that can, and it's an anime deck. But I do I don't use many oracle cards. I yeah. like a system. Uh, cat- I like the tarot. I like Lenormand. Lenormand. I've Lenormand. got I've got a uh, one of the animal spirit decks that I use sometimes, but that's more for helping people figure out okay who should you be talking to right now. <laughs> Mm. And uh, yeah, it's just basic. It's like a bunch of different animals. Okay. Oh, that Kathy's thing reminded me. How do people feel about used decks? That would depend on the condition they're in. Both. I've been gifted a few tarot decks by people. I don't use them because mostly it's, well, you know, it's like, oh, you read tarot cards. Here, you could have this. I found it in um, X's, you know, when we were cleaning it out. Right. That's how I got a copy of the Tarot of the Bohemians. I trust myself nice to be able to read the deck and, and the, read the energy of the deck and do what I need to if it's something I'm interested in. Yeah. I mean, I've never been given one that I felt, okay, I've got to smudge the hell out of this thing and, <laughs> you know, as I said, I, I've got the two decks I find objectionable locked up in a steel box, but that's a different matter. Right. That that has more to do with uh, this was a mistake. Yeah. Now, one of the things we've been talking a lot in the alley about is the counterfeit tarot decks and how we're trying to <coughs> find that counterfeit. Counterfeit tarot decks coming out of places like China. And they oh. are flimsy paper or poor copies, so never the same size. Always say the book is available online to download. And they're cheap. And they don't give the, the, the artist doesn't get the money. One okay. The, Seven has been very specific about in the Ali Montero his cards are all sourced from existing decks and he's making sure the artists are getting the proper credit and finances. Yep. And when he, and there are a lot of cards he's had created, especially for the almond deck. And a lot of his stretch goals have actually been, if we reach this point in fundraising, the artists will get $200 more each. Uh, From what I understand, it is now the most completely funded Kickstarter for tarot ever. It is. Yeah. So that is one of the things I think that sold me on the deck is this is what's been done with respect. Mm-hmm. Being done with careful thought and respect. As opposed to somebody with a copying machine who wants to make a few bucks off of somebody else's art. Yes. But in the process of trading decks with people, a lot of people are buying decks for the purpose of trading, trading cards, individual cards. Mm. And we've had to, people had to make make statements about the existence of fake cards and how you tell them and what to do about it. General consensus seems to be that where you can, you you buy an actual copy of the deck from the artists and if anything, you use the fake deck for tarot art or something. Yeah, I could see how that would make an interesting, you know, I'm going to do a collage and I don't yeah. want to cut up an actual tarot deck. Right. But that is something that we've all become aware of now. I didn't realize there were fake ones out there, although I should have, because I've seen a lot of fake things for other categories of products, but. I'm assuming if you go on Wish you're going to f- and type in tarot cards, you're going to find thousands of them. They kind of have mini- miniature versions of tarot decks, sometimes even smaller playing card size. I've got one of those. It, it's literally the size of my thumb. It's listed as the world's smallest tarot deck, and it is Something practically impossible. Chain ring. <laughs> uh, no, this one came, uh, did, this was pre-plastic box. Oh, okay. This one is in a cardboard box that in my case is wrapped with several layers of um, scotch cellophane tape. Oh my. To keep it together. 
but it and to semi waterproof it, but it's it is not, almost impossible. Not a fake one, really, but uh... no, that's not a fake one because I I bought it at a bookstore in Westport once again decades ago. Mm -hmm. But it's almost impossible to use because the cards are so small. Trying to shuffle them is throw them in the air and catch them in a bag or something. You know? you, you literally need the finger strength of Charles Atlas, yeah, in order to uh, flex the paper and all. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to mention uh, my daughter's. Uh, when you say throw them in the air, <laughs> my, daughter, my daughter came up with a system. For reading cards, the only cards they happened to have with them were um, her tarot cards, and so she they were tossing them at a hat, and she started reading them. But of course, she knows them, and yeah. she, so the one you read the ones that didn't go into the hat, and and the proximity was who was leaning on it, it was like right there, and if it was mm -hmm. a long way away, and she was getting great readings. Wow from throwing cards at a hat. <laughs> That's one of the things I figured out now in the last year or so is that I can kind of make up the, the set dial of layout for whatever yeah. purpose I have at the moment. I mean, I, I carry a copy of the Gypsy Witch tarot or fortune telling deck with me. I have a copy of that, yeah. For, that. for yeah. just basically, you know, off the cuff readings. I don't use the instructions. I just lay out a certain number and, you know, mm -hmm. um, go from there. But, you know, so I understand because the instructions are so ponderous. You know, you've got to lay out, you know, like seven, the entire bloody deck. I think they're using a Lenormand technique there. Probably. That's what I believe. I've yeah. got a I've got a copy that Kathy gifted to me of Lenor Lenormand, but I haven't gotten around to using them. It's like I said, that's for quick pickup readings in case I need something and I don't have my kit with me. Just yeah, like yeah. I have a bag of runes etched on plastic elk teeth that ride in a bat in my pocket as well. I try to carry There's a reason, but I can always improvise if I don't have one with me. Yeah. I improvised right. once with the Celtic, uh, the, the Celtic cross spread. We were out car shopping and not having cards. I pulled the cards, credit cards. Uh, you, know, you get a free pizza after you clicked off 12, et cetera. All of those yeah. out of my wallet, shuffled them, laid them out in the Celtic cross and damn if we didn't get a good reading because we knew that the one from you know what what the card that was from, <gasps> from uh, you, you the frequent buyer's card from the fabric store meant Excuse we me. knew what the, it's been... the uh <laughs> the license my my, my car, driver's license meant we knew what the credit card meant and all of these things fit into the we knew what the the uh the, the positions meant and it, once you got the symbolism down, you can read just about friggin' anything. Yeah. Well, yeah. But you have everything, to, to whether well, whether it's cards or runes or coins, it, it's just a matter of uh, you know tapping into those portions that are normally quiescent. Mm -hmm. That's an important thing to do. There, there was yeah. a. There's a book, and I don't think it had a deck of cards, but it was aimed at uh, high-powered guys on Wall Street or whatever. And they would take a deck of tarot cards, and they would throw them out on the table, and they would say, what does that mean? And somebody would ask a question, they would throw another one out, and they would look at the picture, and they were getting some really great results by just doing that when none of them knew jack shit about the tarot mm -hmm. but oh, of the course images spoke to them and bypassed their their front brain and went straight to their intuition yeah interesting and concept they were like, i think they may have called it the business tarot or something but, yeah, but then again you know so much of wall street is intuition and um vague bits of precognition to make it to figure out what's going where.
Hello. Yeah. Holy shit, it's done. Yeah. Past time. We're I'm, we're running guess, over. We've, we've been we've been going on. <laughs> yeah. I, I've been thinking perhaps I should mention the time, but <laughs> yeah, well, we just did. I got no brain right now, Kathy. And mine is rapidly heading towards the they're gonna hear me snoring soon. <laughs> well, where I, I have work, a mute button. <laughs> Okay, yeah. but yes, me, but the idea of me going shh, yeah. Let me do the closing then. Thank yeah. you for, thanks everybody for coming and uh, please remember to share Changing Times, Changing Worlds uh, with your friends because everybody is into healing or, or um, divination or folklore or magic or manifestation or something. Yeah. Trying to get people to and uh, sign up but the conference this year is going to be november 8th to 14th uh two full days on the weekend and evening uh classes and panels on uh, monday through friday yep and, uh, on zoom so tell people it's and and then 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 wednesday yep. nights we're mm -hmm. we're here on zoom and then lois puts it up on our yeah. youtube channel uh, for that one, for that one, I will be unavailable on Tuesday and Thursday night of the uh, conference. That that that's when our it, thank you for for that's that's the we say that every time. Join join us yeah. on Facebook. Yeah, just okay. Push the button, Max. <laughs> I have every intention of it. <laughs> Lee.